Hi, everybody. Good evening. Um, I'm going to introduce myself for a second and, um, and firstly just preface off by saying this is, you know, we're all in a crazy situation and this is real time. So if I get interrupted or my door bursts open or something gets thrown through the door, you'll have to forgive me because um, I kind of just ducked out of, of the realities of dinner time and bedtime over here just to, to jump on this call. Um, okay, so my name is Ruthie. My last name is Lynn. It's Ruthie Lynn. Um, I live here in um, Bala Kinwood in Pennsylvania. And um, as you can hear from my somewhat <laughs> little bit left English accent, I'm not from here originally. I'm from the UK and um, I've been here for almost uh, 16 years now, which is crazy. Okay, so I'm living here and I have been teaching parenting and I'm a parenting coach and I am training to be and the last legs of becoming a marriage and family therapist also. Um, parenting is definitely my passion. At home at the moment, I have eight of my children under one roof, which is pretty crazy. Yes, that's eight kids and um, we're all together um, and really, really trying to adjust to this, this new normal, I guess. So um, that's a little bit about myself. Um, I believe tonight we're going to be talking about how to try and create calm in the midst of this uh, very challenging and crazy situation and um, how to handle, was it how to create calm and um, managing anxiety. So I'm going to do the best I can to address that in the short amount of time that we have. Please, please, please feel free to hop on the chat and ask me a question. Um, I hope I can function if I need some support. I think Alana's out there somewhere kind of help me, but, um, and if not, then you can just say hi, <laughs> um, and we can take it from there. Okay. Um, great. So I feel like, um, one of the things that I, that I really, really try and focus on when I give my parenting talks is how you as a mother in particular are really the heartbeat of the home. You know, you affect everything and how you feel um, is going to be felt around you in the atmosphere, so to speak, in the fabric of your home. It's almost a little bit like you're an overflowing cup of emotion. You know, if like you're worried about the situation, you're agitated, you're frustrated, even if you put a nice smile on your face and say, don't worry, sweetie, and hang on, and your children can feel it because you really are, that the way that you feel directly enters into the hearts and minds of our kids. And it's incredibly important, I can't stress this enough, to really try and work on your mindset first. Remember, the, the image is you're the overflowing cup of emotion, you know? So yeah, part of it is that you have to fill yourself up and first before you can have the effect on the people that are around you. How do you fill yourself up? So, you know, we have to keep ourselves solid. And obviously right now, this is a crazy, crazy situation we found ourselves in. You know, one of my uh, 10 year olds said to me yesterday, <laughs> she's, she said, mommy, when, we, when we're older and we're mommies, are people gonna ask us, were you alive during the corona plague? And we're gonna say, yes. And I suddenly realized like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is really how they're, they're seeing it. You know, we're really in this crazy situation and everything stopped from one day to the next. So our lives have been turned upside down. And, and what is the mindset? You know, how do we keep ourselves solid? So one thing I just want to add is that yesterday, I think for the first time, I, with, with all the, the adjusting and, okay, I'm going to handle this and, okay, I have all my eight kids home with me under one roof. <laughs> I actually did feel a little bit sad for the first time because my five-year-old pulled out of his bag like this this sign from the teacher saying that he had a special job um, in school on Friday and of course he wasn't going to get to do it and I suddenly felt like wow that's sad I felt like that loss a little bit um, and I've been trying to be so upbeat. This was the first time I actually felt like, oh, I can't believe this. this is sad. These kids, they haven't seen their friends. They're not going out. And so the first part here is just to give yourself a chance to feel your feels, you know, like it's okay to feel a little sad. It's okay, obviously, to feel overwhelmed. 
give yourself the chance to just adjust to this new normal because it is a transition for all of us. Okay. So that's the, the first thing. But the other part of it is, which is a little bit more challenging perhaps and more exciting on the other hand is that, you know, we are, we may feel that this situation is totally out of control, but it's not out of control. It's just out of our control, you know, and we have to adjust to that right now. If we relay that message that the situation is out of control, we're going to create a lot more anxiety and stress in our own house. So if we're going with this model of like the mindset of me, the mindset of mommy is where it's at, it's where it all starts, then ultimately, you know, the first part is that we have to realize it's just not in our control. The, the, you know, the field posts have been shifted, but we as the heartbeat of our home can definitely still have a huge impact. And in fact, so many times in my parenting classes, I'm dealing with moms who are complaining so much about the impact of technology and social media and even the friendships that their kids are involved in that they're not enjoying or they see it's a negative impact. And now finally we have this opportunity to be incredibly impactful. So we have to see this as an unbelievable privilege. We have to see that we're being given an opportunity to really make a very big impact on our kids if we so want to, and also maybe even shift ourselves. You know, we've, we run around a lot and now we're just being held still. So it can be good, we can make good out of it. And that's the first part of our attitude. It has to be, we can make lemons, out, we can make lemonade out of lemons, we can do this. And I'm capable, I'm strong, and I can go into this with a positive attitude. So that's just the, you know, the first part of it. The second part of it also I feel is that you know, I guess the, the one of the analogies that popped into my head, you can guess I've been doing a tremendous amount of laundry over the last few days, okay, with everybody home and uh, no, no cleaning help in sight and nothing, nothing doing. So it happens to be that I throw, I threw like a bunch of stuff in my laundry machine and it got completely, I filled it up too much and I, I was worried I actually even broke my washing machine. But when I pulled the stuff out, I saw it was saturated still, like it hadn't drained. And it just sparked something off in my head I realized that's a little bit also like our mindset right now you know we are so overly saturated with just adjusting we've got to get our kids on track we have to you know online school we have to suddenly be at home we're not going to work or we're trying to work with our kids and we have to work and everybody's eating a ton non-stop and like how am I you know and so it's like the, my mind is just buzzing with with all this overload that I'm not used to and so what's the first thing you do you know with your soggy laundry you don't leave it in there to drain it's not going to drain by itself you don't rewash it because you're worried you broke the washing machine there's too much stuff in the first place you relocate you take the stuff and you take it outside you let it drip dry whatever it is and then hopefully you try it all over again so I guess what I'm trying to say is that with your mindset also you have to relocate totally you are not in the same realm as you were last week I've read some really hilarious posts on Facebook as I'm sure some of you have too about what's going on somebody told me that she was cooking all day today or I read something that she was cooking all day today thinking it was Friday and um she was just like cooking up a storm for the weekend and everything else and she just totally thought it was Friday like we're all lost she had no idea that it was actually Thursday we're not there yet we're not Friday yet so part of it is we just have to relocate our brains to to a new environment and create this new normal for ourselves and for our kids but the thing to tap now we have an unbelievable opportunity privilege to be the number one influencers on our kids i as cheesy as it sounds but i like to call it to you know a momfluencer we are now momfluencers okay we are our kids social media we are our kids chefs we're our kids entertainment we're our kids um you know emotional support we are the momfluencers now. So we can create a tribe, okay, out there, fun and function. We can create a tribe of momfluencers. And thankfully, we have an amazing organization like um, Fun and Function out there that, that is, you know, vying and, and supporting us and giving us ideas and access to education and, and things so that we can try desperately to recreate this new normal in a healthy and positive and exciting way. Okay, so... So fine, if we're on overload and we're trying to create this new mindset, what's one of the first things that I could really do? Uh, the first thing I have to do 
is totally 100% lower my expectations across the board. Okay. I cannot have the same expectations, the same structure that I had previously. <clears throat> and things have changed so much in a week. So last week, my stress was, am I getting my kids on the bus on time? Am I, you know, does everybody have something to wear? Am I getting to work on time? Am I getting to the bank? Whatever it is, everything's gone out the window. Now my new normal is, how am I surviving and what am I doing with this? Okay, so lowering your expectations is huge for all of us. Even if, I used to travel a lot with my kids and, and yes, all eight of them and people thought I was utterly insane for, for doing such a thing. But my husband, um, you know, we, we worked with students and we would often travel and take run these trips abroad and I would take my kids. But there was so much unpredictable, <laughs> you know, unpredictability, I would say. But but the truth is what I to really keep everybody going was wherever we were, I would always create some kind of structure from them even if it was a totally skeletal structure that just really began with breakfast lunch and dinner and not much else but your kids need to know how the day is going to begin how it's going to get to in the middle and where it's going to end even if you want to do that by mealtime that's fine but lower your expectations you don't know exactly how online school is going to go today and you don't know if the sun's going to shine or you're going to be able to go outside and you don't even know if everybody's going to be feeling okay so right now we're just talking about creating a structure but you need as a mom to set that tone and give your kids that information in some form even if they're young a three-year-old can say today we're going to start off doing this then we're going to do that and later on to you know we'll do that and if it changes that's fine just adjust the schedule but lowering your expectations is a huge piece one of the, I think, lowering it for your kids and lowering it for yourself. If you have one time a day that you can just say, hey, I have one goal. I'm going to try and provide one element of something different, something fun, something, you know, tonight my older girl said, Ma, I think we're going to do manicures tonight. Great. We're going to do manicures. We're going to file nails and we're going to paint nails and we're going to do something. That was our big accomplishment today. That's awesome. That's one thing. The other day I actually ran to fun and function and acquired a whole load of sensory toys for my kids because I wanted to just bring one thing into the house that was new and different that created something interesting because that's all I could offer and actually even my older kids and I have kids ranging from the ages of five to 20 in the house right now even my older kids were having a blast with these great sensory toys and balls and just something new colorful to add into my house I did it you know no problem I think one of the goals is just Every day, put one thing in that's slightly different for yourself. If that works for you, put one thing that makes everybody excited. We're lowering our expectations. You remember last week when it was like, can we do this? Can we do that? Can we watch this? Can we go here? Can we go to this friend? Can we? Now it's just one thing because we can't do any of that. Okay, so that's part of creating the new normal, so to think, so to speak. Another part, obviously, we're we're talking about we're meant to be talking a little bit about those kids that uh, um, struggle with ADD. Maybe you're struggling with how to handle them. They're finding the online schooling really challenging. I think you know you, maybe you guys can post some of your comments here. Um, in terms of just how how you're feeling about the online school in general. But I, I feel like the hype was really great the first couple of days. Everyone was super excited. And then my sixth grader figured out how to mute the teacher on one call. So that was, you know, funny and we and then disastrous. And we already got like two emails home from the school. And then, you know, I had another of my daughters, the ADHD daughter of mine crying because she can't handle learning this on the phone or on the computer. It's crazy and she can't hear anything she can't understand anything and she just gave up I have another kid cooking eggs and like trying to be on the class at the same time and you know there's so much going on it's so crazy but the if you if you do have or you find yourself in a situation with a kid who's ADD and who's struggling with that in particular just realize lower your expectations the online school may not work right now and that's okay it's okay you can be a bigger impact even. We can't even rely on our school systems. They will pick up. They will make it. They will get the information back. What's most successful for your child, what's most important, excuse me, right now for your child is that they feel that you are, they feel 
somewhat in control of their life because their life has also shifted drastically, okay? So we look at, sometimes we look at our kids' emotional needs and our, their physical needs, their, their psychological needs, and especially with those ADHD kids, I highly recommend finding a way to meet their need for control over their life in a positive form. What do I mean by that? Don't wait until they do something so outlandish, right? And so off the wall that they get control because they got you to stop doing whatever it was you were doing and everybody else to stop and stare and look and deal. Maybe try doing it preemptively so you recognize that they don't have much control over their life. They can't go anywhere. They can't do anything. They're not really interacting with their friends. They're not in school. They're not... And it can be extremely challenging. So maybe, you know, if you have a younger child who's ADD and who's struggling and the online school's over, you know, before it even started because they're not really enjoying it so much, you know, maybe you can find something, tap into a talent, give them something. You know, I have a younger child. I made her just in charge of choosing what's for dinner. It's not such a big deal, but I wanted to give her a sense of some form of control over her life. I have an older child who is very ADD-esque in her, in her mannerisms and everything else, and I made her totally in charge of spring cleaning. You are going to go through every room and pick out, I gave her a packet of red stickers, pick out any things in the room that you don't think we need anymore and just exert your control. I didn't tell her that, but just exert your control, get some order in this house. This is great. We need you. And I really saw it working. Her whole demeanor changed. It was unbelievable because even though maybe she picked some things that I wouldn't have picked to throw away, or she was trying to throw away like the whole house, you know, and I'm trying to calm her down at the end of the day, she was exerting some control over her life in a healthy way. And she was being appreciated for it. And the smile on her face and the feeling around her was super positive, And that's what we need to do right now. That's what it really means to be a mom fluence. So I'm looking at what my kids need emotionally. I'm looking at what they need um, you know, in a positive way, how can I provide that for them? How can I give that to them before it reaches the point of demanding it from me? And I can be the one that's making the biggest impact, hopefully, um, on their mindset right now. Okay. So, um, just trying to see there, see some of the questions coming up here. Hang on, hang on. Or if it's just comments. Okay, so I see I have one child with ASD and is missing ABA. Yeah, the ther the not, not having therapy is extremely hard. And I would say, you know, without... I, I, I'm, I wish I had more time to, to go into it in detail. But again, the key part right now is to lower your expectations. You're going to have more meltdowns. And really and truthfully, the only thing that you can do in that type of situation is just create a safe environment as best as you can and just recognize that, yeah, this is going to be the reality. The less I have expectations of this child in terms of really succeeding or if they're overstimulated or whatever it is, if I can just lower it down and recognize that's part of the reality, I'm going to be in a better mindset. When I'm in a better mindset, because I don't have high expectations for success, so to speak, or getting through these challenges with this kid, and I'm accepting them for who they are and what their challenges are, I think you're going to find it frees up the atmosphere a lot more than trying to get them to be or to function in a way that they were when they had all the support that they had just a week or a few weeks ago. Okay. Um, anything else? There are a lot of tutors that won't help because they're difficult and can't see them in person. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. hundred percent. This is part of the issue. So what we can do as moms with these kids, they're not going to get the support or the education. Just realize we cannot rely on the school system. We cannot rely on the tutors. We cannot rely on the therapists right now. We can only rely on ourselves. And what does that really mean? It means that I can dig very, very deep as a mom, okay? And it's like, you know, squeezing grape juice out of a grape. I can actually find resources that I never thought I had. I could find energy that I never realized I had, and I could focus perhaps in a different way. You don't have to be the most creative person in the world. You just have to be accepting of this situation and rise to the challenge as best as you possibly can by well, like I said, lowering expectations and finding positive way to meet the emotional needs of your kids right there and then. Okay, I see another couple of questions here. I'm just trying to scroll through. Sorry about this. 
Uh, what are you doing about going to the grocery stores? How are you taking care of your kids while you go in for single parents? Yeah, I think the only answer, I mean, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just trying to do online orders. And to be honest, today, I actually had a friend that offered because I'm sort of hauled. I have all the kids. I could potentially go, but it's just been so crazy that I haven't managed to go. And I had a friend um, who offered she was going to Costco and she offered to get a few things a few staples and I just did the best I can with the online stuff and that's all I can recommend I don't recommend that you take the kids out necessarily unless you absolutely have to and if you do then you know you go at the the quietest hours that you possibly can um everybody's situation is slightly different of course according to where they're where they are and where they're from and what the uh, social, what the norms are right now, where, you know, so, so everybody's struggling on a slightly different level. Um, okay, so I think just looking at the timing, I want to make sure that I'm not... Uh, yes, um, Ruth, Ruth, yes, I'm reading, Ruth, also, we just have two other Q&As here that came in. Um, there's basically two segments for the q and I'll read it out loud to you. Um, yeah, please, so, yeah. Great, so one person said, I have a child who's very behind academically and has ADHD and gives me a very hard time during work. He just wants to have downtime throughout the day without feeling the need to do much work. I'm constantly arguing with him about working academically. That's one of the questions. Right. Right. Great. So um, thank you for the question. I think that, again, I, I, I understand... I had just with one of my kids, also my ADD kid, had just finally settled into a good pattern in school. We had just literally got her into a place where she felt like she was getting the support that she needed and she was feeling more successful and the tantrums had ended and it had just reached that point and she cried and cried and cried the first time you know when, when we realized that she had to come home because she knew that it was going to be extremely difficult for her I really genuinely believe that the situation's not out of control like I said it's just out of our control you know we are uh, we, we are not a school system you cannot expect to keep your kid up to par even if they're behind academically that is not your primary concern your primary concern right now honestly is just using the um, abilities that you have to build your kid from the inside there are so many things and skills that you can give to your kid right now that they won't be able to get in the school or even academically even if it's just learning silly things like matching socks you know and folding laundry and cutting up vegetables, peeling vegetables, doing things around the house that they never would have done, but just making them fun or making them interesting. There are obviously some pretty good resources out there. Um, I went on a few of the scholastic things, just, uh, just, you know, different books and different things just to feel like you're at least stimulating um, your child um, in, in some way rather than just downtime or just, you know, watching garbage or whatever it is. So I would still make an effort to minimize the extent of um, just straight out, you know, chilling or watching nothing with much content for most of the time. But I really genuinely feel that you cannot have that expectation of your child to continue their growth academically right now because it's very, very, very hard, even for a child who's not ADD, to be successful with all of this online programming. They're finding it hard. You know, some of my kids had headaches. Some of my kids feel stressed. They say it's an adjustment. And who knows how long we're going to be in this situation. I think if the situation goes on for a very long time, God forbid, I hope that's not the case, then yeah, we're going to have to answer this question in a bigger in a bigger way what am I doing to try and provide some of those academic maybe you can find a face somebody to FaceTime and tutor the kid that they like or something like that but outside of that for right now I feel what's key is that we get that atmosphere in our home warm positive connected there shouldn't be arguing if you can possibly avoid it because you're going to be stuck together with a for a really long time at the moment and we've got to make it good can I, just, can I just uh, speak up for a minute? It's an opportunity. Yeah. For, it's Aviva here. I'm the OT. Um, it's an opportunity for your kids to learn words like pandemic, 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> that right. would not have ever entered. Right, that. exactly. There's there's so, so much there. There's so much that we can teach yeah. them that we wouldn't normally. I was saying before that you know I went out with my five year old to play ball because I was ripping my hair out yesterday, and we ended up. I realized when I was playing ball with him that he actually can't catch. Okay, at all. And after 45 minutes of playing ball, he could catch at the end. And when was the last time that I sat or I stood for 45 minutes with my five year old outside, you know, and play ball? And these are skills. Sometimes, you know, we're, we're chasing so much on the outside, we forget about this essential internal component that we're trying to build with our kids. And I feel like we've been given an amazing opportunity right now to do that. We've just got to stay strong because you stay can really move, watch, you watch can move mountains. You can do yeah. a ton. Yeah, watch um, as many memes as possible. You have to laugh yeah. as much as possible and find yeah. the humor in this very unfunny situation right. um, because <laughs> it's just so unfunny that it's funny. It's it's really right. not funny. It's scary. It's really it's not funny, but it's terrifying. It's funny. But you I, know, um, I, mean, I even said this morning, I was like, my, my child will just remain illiterate and will know the word pandemic. And that's just the reality mm -hmm. right now because... I'm just not an educator and I, and, and I don't think that I can ever be an educator. So, you know, it's just, and, and drink a lot of wine, which is what you're well, doing. Well, that's right. what I was going to say, you know, <laughs> wine. I actually, my, my husband talk about making jokes. Apparently they, um, Trump announced or something today that they, they've discovered that malaria medication is actually, um, working quite well for some of the corona patients, which is an amazing breakthrough. But I also happen to know from some of my traveling experience in South Africa that quinine, which you find in a gin and tonic, is also very good for malaria, which by definition means that we are all obligated to drink gin and tonics at the moment as well to get us through. So that was my deduction for today as well. Um, I will just say just on that, on that note as well, in terms of just finding other ways to educate your children in a more creative sense or, or lowering all of your expectations down to the real basics. You know, it's like we're, re, we're putting all of our affairs in order. We're, we are building from the ground up right now. But one thing that I've also found to be very helpful is trying to shift the mindset to what kind of kindness can I do for somebody today? I'm stuck at home. There are a lot of people at home on their own. Does somebody need a call? Does somebody need a picture? Can I mail something to someone to cheer them up? You know, my kids got very into that. And it's when do we have time really to think about that? And when do we have the opportunity to, um, to educate our kids in that way? Like through kindness, like what can I do? And whenever you're faced with a situation situation like this um, you are focusing on or you have a choice of what to, to give your kids they can focus on the anxiousness who's going to get sick next who's you know what's going on with grandma what's going on with grandpa they can focus on that or we could also focus on who's helping them isn't it amazing that people are going into hospitals and they're working hard and they're doing things what can we do to help those people maybe we can put together a care package maybe we can do something and I feel like this is also a tremendous opportunity to have an impact on the moral fabric of our kids you know what our kids are really made of on the inside as well and if we believe in that and we want to this is the opportunity and, and part of me feels that that's so much more significant than what they're going to learn in school half the time because they're they're you know we have that opportunity and they're not they're not necessarily always going to pick up on it you know, across the very fast paced life that we live. But right now, when everything's slowed down, this is an amazing opportunity to really impact our kids and educate our kids in that way. Does that make sense? Um, okay. Ruth, Ruth, Ruth and Aviva, I know we're almost out of time, but I wonder, there's one more question. You could just address this last question quickly. Sure. Um, somebody sent in, how many, um, any tips for sibling frustration while cooped up at this time? Don't have the mm -hmm. space to separate the oldest with ADHD is easily triggered without having those natural breaks from younger siblings. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. I mean, definitely siblings is a huge area. Um, and I think, again, what we have to do is try and get into the mindset of that we're all in this together, you know? Um, I think that most of the time when siblings get 
annoyed with each other most of the time, I would say. Um, when they're getting triggered or they're getting agitated with each other, it's because they're still functioning in a way almost as if they, you know, they, they're pitching themselves against each other because I'm in the room and I'm interfering. Take yourself out of the picture. You know something? It's not a bad thing. Everybody's going to have to figure this out a little bit, that we're stuck together, and it's so much more pleasant if we can get along with each other. You know, so the more I try and pick sides as a parent, or the more I try and put it like this, forget picking sides. The more I try and judge what's going on and determine in my head who's right and who's wrong, the more tension there's going to be. You know, even if I have compassion towards one child because they're ADHD and they're getting more frustrated or I have less compassion towards this one because they're older and they should know better or I have more compassion to the younger one because they're so cute and they're young and they're tired and they don't understand what's going on. All of my emotions, once they start to interplay in the sibling situation, it can get very, very sticky. So the best thing for you to do, even though it can be a little bit grueling at the beginning, is really try and step out of the interaction as much as humanly possible. If you are in the kitchen and they start killing each other and fighting and coming in, you know, you just say, I'm in the kitchen if you need me. And they come yelling, he did this and she did this. And you could just look at them and say, well, you shouldn't do that. And you shouldn't do that. Or what do you guys want to do? How can we make this situation better? I think the most important piece, even though it's very anti-intuitive often, is to try and be as non-judgmental as humanly possible. Because the less judgmental you are, the more you're going to trigger a reality for your kids that they have a choice as to how to handle the situation and you're not feeding or fueling the fire in any one direction. You know, you can come up with solutions for both of them. It's almost like, I call it double siding. It's like, you know, if one kid is ADD and they're going crazy because this one made a noise or this one, you know, got, took something that they shouldn't or upset them or touched them in a way that they don't like or did something annoying and the other one is just you know outsmarting them or being obnoxious or whatever it is you know you can judge the situation but you could also just say okay you can't annoy him and you have to not be so sensitive what are we going to do to make this better right now I don't care if you say double I call that like a double negative or if you say a double positive okay you are amazing. Let's sit down and find you a picture to draw because you're so artistic. And you are amazing, but I see you getting frustrated. So let you come in the kitchen and sit with me in here right now until you feel calmer. As long as it's even keeled and you hold your ground and you don't get emotionally entangled in what I would call a small, low scale um, argument, you're okay. I haven't got time, unfortunately, to go fully into a whole, what I call a whole sibling dynamic, but that would really be my main tip is just try and not be judgmental of the situation. Try and keep yourself out of it because I'm telling you that the more your siblings recognize that they are actually on the same team <laughs> and that they don't have the opportunity to pitch you against each other, so to speak, the better they'll get on. Um, there are many proofs of this, you know, it's like so many times if you take care of a situation and you, you know, let's say your kids are fighting about which seat they get to sit in the car and it's not fair. He always gets to sit in that seat no, 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 and they're fighting and suddenly you come up with like some kind of technical solution. Like you make a chart. Okay, guys, you're fighting. So on Mondays and Wednesdays, you're going to go in the front and then on, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're going to go in the front and that's it. And then for long journeys, this, and they sign off on this. All of a sudden, no one's fighting anymore. Why? Because they all feel like their needs have been represented. So the, the bottom line is, when you take care of the situation, either technically you just make something fair in a solution-oriented way, or you just don't engage in the, in the argument, you're going to come up with much better results. I hope that's helpful. Ruthie, can I move into your house now and be your kid? Absolutely. <laughs> I'd love to have you as my kid. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> okay great thank you Any all more questions? no we're good thank you Ruthie thank you Alana okay, you're so welcome um, wishing everybody a lot of love and, uh, and, oh. and health and blessings out there success with our kids and good energy and if you can fill out the survey everybody it's posted 
um, we would greatly appreciate it because we'd love to run more of this kind of programming and would love to understand what your needs are. Um, so please fill it out and we will continue to provide this kind of service. And we great, greatly appreciate your participation and wishing you a lot of love and good vibes and health. Great. Thanks, Aviva. Okay, good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.